So the box says Roker, Mechanical Age, Emperor Scorpion. Okay, we have this nice kind of translucent design and illustration of what it's going to look like when you're done. And inside we have a large number of individually bagged, labeled with some bag numbers, parts that are mostly either done in specific colors of plastic or somewhat painted. We have a relatively large instruction booklet here, which is pretty detailed in the total number of things they have on it. We have a base that has what looks like a USB-C port here and a button. Um, it has place for batteries on and off on the bottom. So it looks like it has some powered features, like lights and motors. And we have a box which probably has the powered features. Alright, so we have here a tool set which has a, looks like a little sanding thing a pair of plastic tweezers, and a super tiny, looks like a Phillips-ish, maybe a Japanese screwdriver. We also have a whole set of badges, motors, gears, screws, um, very tiny little pieces here to assemble. So the interesting one here looks to be um, a USB port that looks like it's going to plug into that with a whole bunch of little connection jacks and various motors and lights that have connection jacks that plug into these guys to make things animate. So this is a pretty involved um, kit that has motorized and light up parts in addition to all of the plastic parts here. Um, and it looks like we're going to need some tools like some clippers, some sanders, things like that to assemble this. This build took me 165 minutes, about 2.7 hours. It requires you provide three AAA batteries, but the screwdriver they provide is all you need to open up the battery compartment. So step one here is assemble all these and test them to make sure they all work before you build the model around them. All right, we have one red light turned on. And supposedly more stuff's supposed to happen. All right, I had this thing in backwards. It is a USB-C style where it's reversible, but if I paid attention to the directions, I would have known to do it this way. Um, and so now, it apparently didn't break anything, luckily for me. Um, when you push the button, everything lights and flashes and moves and does all kinds of cool things. We have to install this fancy Roker nameplate with two of the biggest screws, and they may look tiny, but those are actually the largest screws they provide in the entire kit. Just so you know what you're getting yourself into here. Ten minutes into this procedure, I did what I should have done at the beginning. I got a task lamp to light up my workspace a little better. So they have a nice perforation on the baggies, so you don't need scissors to cut them open, but they also have them packaged you know, different parts together. And if you want to get the middle part out without opening the other two parts, you're going to need some scissors to cut down vertically. And now this preparation I can just pull off. So every part is labeled with the letter of this little plastic injection molded setup and with a number. So for example, this part here is D number one. So after you cut them out with the nipper pliers, a little bit of sanding is all it takes to get rid of the last little bit of plastic sticking out. So these parts fit together really nicely. There's tiny little slots and gaps and circles. So like when I push these two together, they just pressure fit. There was a tiny little snap there and boom, it is connected. The instructions are full color and they include details like the fact that the yellow wire on this motor should be facing down when you put it into this part. So you have to pay attention to the details, but they do provide them for you. They also show you like wire routing around the pegs so you don't get wires caught. All right, I ran into my first snag. It says to put the black tube in the position shown. So apparently you're supposed to be able to slide this black tube up to control those wires. Unfortunately, this black tube um, holding onto the wires, pushing it along, it, it is not moving up. I'm not sure if it's been shrunk there or if it's just there's too many wires in it. So I'm not able to move that black tube. So I'm just going to have to leave the black tube where it is 
and try to not pinch any of those wires when I snap this thing together. But you're supposed to be maneuvering the wires through these little points so it doesn't get s pinched when you snap things together. So they have wire management little slots that you tab this wire into. I'm doing okay even without that black tube being going through those. I just had to put all the individual wires through the spots. Alright, I had to open up yet another bag of screws. This is number five bag, which has the P16 screws, and I use those to put these two pieces here together to hold them together. I found my first part here that does not work well with the provided sandpaper board and that's because there's a sprue point right in the bottom of that rounded region um, and so this guy is too wide to get in there. So I got a rounded needle file and my flat needle file to get that guy down. Um, so if you're a model builder you probably have something like this already. If you don't do this a lot you might need to invest in small needle files. So the D set here is not injected with gold plastic, it's gray plastic that's been painted gold. And that only becomes an issue when you trim them off. If you sand the spew points on the outside, you're going to get gray plastic showing through like I did here. So my suggestion is not to sand those spew points, even if they stick out a little bit, because then you get gray plastic showing through. Um, in my case, I'm lucky I have a kind of chromish silver or a rose gold marker. I'm going to hit afterwards to fix that up. All right, about 45 minutes of working time into the build. I've completed part number two, which is this motor spinny arm, and I'm moving on to part number three. I appreciate this nice touch. They put this nine centimeter ruler out on the printed page, so when you're supposed to make sure these wires stick out at least nine centimeters, it's right there for you. This part here, you'll want to pay attention to. The wires come out the bottom. The pictures show everything, but you have to look at the pictures and pay attention to make sure you get things set up right. I'm really appreciating all the little greebles that they stick onto the big parts. So this guy here has one, two, three on the back, and then four or five in different colors on the front here that meshes with the thing that goes in front of it. Um, you know, so there's, they're adding lots of little details into this thing just by sticking little parts on it. So far, every single one of these parts has gone in, you know, friction fit, just push it in by hand, doesn't need any glue. Um, I've been really impressed with the ease of building and the fitment of all these parts. Not to mention this little clear light pipe that bracket is bracketed by these two plastic parts that's going to fit in the top of this for that LED to shine up and then out. So in addition to the two main shell body pieces, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight little greebles just to add some visual interest and the flashy light. So here's another example of a part with the things that could use some sanding being too narrow for the wide sandboard they give you, whereas having a flat needle file on hand will make your life a lot easier. Not that those needed to be sanded, um, I just like to sand some of them. Um, I mean, they, the thing would fit together fine without sanding them, I just don't like those little bumps visible, so I'm sanding them. These little plastic tweezers are invaluable when putting the screws in little holes. I actually have a nice pair of stainless steel tweezers, but I haven't bothered to go get them because these guys do a pretty good job. 75 minutes or so into building, I have the two motor and light assemblies done. That's kind of steps two and three, and I'm moving on to step number four. I was able to move the black tube on the wires from this guy so it's correctly in the wire clips. I like how parts B9 and B13 here go inside just for wire management. All right, we're done with step four, moving on to step five where we close in the top and apparently create a whole plenary gear system that works out of these plastic parts. All right, we're breaking into bag number four with the tiny gears. All right, that's a pretty cool mechanism. All right, we're done with number five, which involves screwing all these screws and putting all that together. Now we're going on to six, which is the tail. All right, 115 minutes into the build, we're done with step six. Moving on to step seven, where we hook all the wires up to this circuit board. All right, this thing's really starting to come together now. This little strip of kind of a fake leather is a nice interesting visual touch just to 
you know, be different from all of the silver and chrome or, you know, silver and gold chrome. So this kit has a lot of little fiddly bits like this tiny little pipe that you pop in there and this little chain that hangs off two screws that you screw onto it. So all these little details just add a lot of visual interest to the kit. It's quite satisfying when you finish the last little bit off of one of these and can throw it away in the box never having to worry about it again. So this guy here is made out of a flexible plastic which is for the legs. Each one of these leg pieces is uniquely different. Um, if you cut them out by number one at a time you won't have any trouble. These guys are marked with L for left and if you look at the diagram in the um, instructions there's like one, two, three, four lines on the top here that match them up. Um, but I just recommend you cut them out in order, assemble them and stick them in in order according to the instructions in the book here. These connection points or the legs attached to the body are the ones that gave me the most trouble out of the entire kit. You really have to stick your thumb on there and push it in hard and twist. The flexible material has to be kind of pushed into those holes and then it expands on the other side. So it takes a decent amount of force to get those legs connected to those holes. So we have left over one or two of each of the screws and fiddly bits that you might be um, dropping on a floor. Okay, this build took me 165 minutes, about 2.7 hours. Um, I'm mechanically inclined, but I'm not you know, a professional model builder by any stretch of the imagination. The instructions were impeccable. Um, I had absolutely no questions about how or what to do things. Only times there were problems was when I had not read one of the many, many, many lines of text in the instructions telling me what I was supposed to do. Um, they provide the necessary tools here. You will need some nippers to get everything out of the sprues. And it's optional, but I found having some small files were, was nice to have. So some small needle files might be useful. They do include a sandpaper bit that gets most of the spots you would need to. Um, so if you follow the directions, you get this little guy here. All right, it looks like about three and a half minutes total for the animation sequence here before it shuts off.